We all know what Sony is. They're a company that make electronics, but surprise, surprise, they also make movies. They have an animation studio where they make animated movies. They've made some amazing films and some not so amazing films. Like for real, a lot of their movies aren't the best, but recently they've gotten a lot of praise. Movies such as Spider-Man and the Spider-Verse and the Mentors vs. the Machines have been praised to death, and for a reason, they're amazing. They both have groundbreaking animation, clever writing, and even more. So yeah, Sony is doing great, but were they always this good, or did some Something happened. Let's go back in time and learn the truth about Sony Pictures Animation. Their first movie was Open Season. I haven't seen it and I don't really want to. Buttermilk biscuits. Yeah, it did okay both critically and financially, but was quickly forgotten. But I guess they were desperate for money because they made three, yes, three straight to video sequels. They straight up looked terrible. But yeah, as you can tell, this wasn't such a good start for the studio, but over the years they got better. They made some good movies and some bad ones, which shows how inconsistent of a studio they are. But in 2017, they released a movie that would ruin their reputation, and that was. <laughs> Here's the thing, I actually don't hate the Emoji Movie. I know, I know, the Emoji Movie is not a good movie. It's cliched, bland, predictable, you get the point, but I enjoyed it. It did really well in the box office, but pretty much failed critically. Critics bashed it to death, and I don't blame them, it's a pretty bad movie. And I seriously have no idea why Sony decided to make the Emoji Movie instead of Popeye. But if you thought that was bad, then check out the star. I haven't seen it, and... Why would I? Just look at it. You can tell this was made with a low budget and little effort. The animation just straight up looks cheap, which proves my point. It surprisingly did okay critically, which, how? But pretty bad financially. It received $62.8 million, which to be completely honest is pretty surprising if you ask me. So yeah, 2017 was a horrible year for the studio. Both movies they released were bad and really ruined the studio's reputation. But fortunately, in late 2018, they released a movie that would ultimately save the studio, which was... Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is amazing. I recently rewatched it like a month ago and it still holds up. It actually got better. The animation is obviously amazing and is some of the best I've ever seen. It's vibrant, energetic, colorful, and the action is always exciting and suspenseful, and a big part of that is the animation. The characters move really fluently and your eyes are always glued to the screen, and that's how exciting it is. It's just filled with so much personality and creativeness, making the movie really fun. I also I really like the characters. Miles Morales is really likable and relatable, and I really cared for him. His relationship with his dad and uncle especially was really heartwarming, and I just love that aspect of the movie. As for flaws, I don't really have any. I mostly just have nitpicks, but who really cares? The one problem I do have with the movie is in the scene where Penny Parker's robot dies. Now here's the thing, we barely know anything about them. It just happens out of nowhere and they try to make it emotional, but it just falls flat. The scene plays for like a minute and then they just move on and forget about it. But then what was the point? They rushed over it and made it meaningless. Why did they include it if they're not going to do anything special with it? But to be honest, it's mostly a nitpick and it doesn't really bother me anyways. Jeez, I just quoted Frozen. What matters is that Sony took a risk and it paid off. The movie did extremely well both critically and financially, which was amazing. And finally, in 2021, they released the Mitchell's vs. the Machine star and Doug the Pug. No, I'm not kidding. Search it up. And it was pretty good. The animation just against Spider-Verse is fresh and vibrant, and the cartoonish feel slash look to it is amazing. The characters' movements are really fluent and energetic, and the characters themselves are really expressive, especially their eyes. The story is quite cliched and predictable, but the movie just has so much heart and personality to it, so I don't really care. It's fast-paced, hilarious, and the characters are all great. It surprisingly got a ton of praise, and it's currently at 98% Rotten Tomatoes, which is just awesome. So overall, Sony Pictures Animation is doing great, and in my opinion, they're getting better, and that's awesome. They didn't have that good of a start, but the important thing is that they've gotten better. So overall, Sony Pictures Animation is a good studio with a bright future. Oh.